Hello, I'm Carrie Roeder, Curatorial Fellow in American Art at the Freer Gallery of Art and the Arthur M. Sackler Gallery, which together form the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. Today, I would like to tell you a little bit about one of my favorite paintings, a small watercolor by the American expatriate artist, James McNeil Whistler. I would argue that Millie Finch is an uncharacteristically sultry image for Whistler. It depicts a model languidly draped across a chaise lounge with an extended arm clasping a fan. With an arched brow, she raises a single finger to her lips. Her expression is both suggestive and confrontational. Finch wears bright red tights, which along with her lips and her red fan she holds in her flexed hand, all connect her to the sofa that she is sprawled upon. Whistler's butterfly monogram can be seen, nestled in the curve of the drape, providing a pop of red in the upper section of the painting, a counterbalance to all the lurid vermilion below. The colored stockings that she wears were newly available in the late 19th century due to the production of aniline dye, and brightly colored tights were a popular style among bohemian women. And the prominence of that flamboyantly unfurled fan is a reminder that fans were the subject of curiosity in the Victorian era, as there was much speculation in the press about the secret messages conveyed by how one wielded their fan. When I say this is uncharacteristic of Whistler, it's because I find the pose and the frank expression to be more reminiscent of paintings by continental artists like Goya or Manet. Whistler was in fact friends with Manet and other 19th century French painters, but always refused to acknowledge their influence or the influence of any other artist for that matter on his work. Looking at the swag of purplish gray drapery in the back of the painting, I'm reminded of the tradition of artists using drapery as a backdrop in formal portraiture, as a way of bringing an element of theatricality and staging to the scene. In this composition, I see an emphasis on the studio as a space of performance and play acting. Millie Finch, the model, is performing a role here, just as she is in this other watercolor from the same period, which is called Note in Pink and Purple, The Studio. Millie wears the same fluffy lavender dress as in the other painting, but with the addition of her jacket and headscarf, she is transformed into a fashionable lady who has stopped in for a casual studio visit and a cup of tea. With a few adjustments to pose and set design, the mood is entirely transformed. Here she is seen speaking with another woman dressed in pink. Her auburn hair identifies her as Maude Franklin, one of Whistler's longtime models and his domestic partner at this time. We can see note in pink and purple as a modest counterpoint to Millie Finch when we realize that Whistler had originally intended to paint two figures in this work as well. On the right side of the chaise lounge, we can see the suggestion of a figure in pink with her arms raised above her head. It is likely Mott Franklin in the same gown she wears in note in pink and purple. We don't know why he left this second figure unfinished, but we do know he made several changes to the composition while working on it. Conservators use infrared and ultraviolet imaging when they studied this work for our online catalog of Whistler's watercolors. The reflected infrared image shows that Whistler made changes to the painting. Initially, Finch's skirt spread out further across the sofa. The artist painted over the skirt, making it appear sleeker and slinkier. When we think about watercolor technique, we think about painting that is done quite rapidly since the pigments dry so quickly. Yet the changes that we see in Millie Finch indicate that this was a work that was very deliberate, that he labored over it. Despite its small scale, measuring just under nine by 12 inches, this is a painting that always commands my attention.